Hello everybody and thank you all for joining me again and congratulations on surviving the first month of 2021. But what happened this month? Well, I'm about to tell you all in small, easy to digest chunks of information. All the games under the name of Lucasfilm, that's mainly Star Wars and Indiana Jones games, will now be releasing under the new name of Lucasfilm Games. This way, Lucasfilm gets its old name of their former game division back, which was later renamed to LucasArts. On the 2nd of January 2021, more than 25 million players were simultaneously logged into Steam, a new record. However, of the 25 million, only 7.4 million turned out to be actually playing a game. That means that the record of March 2020, when 8.1 million players were playing, is not broken. Either way, thanks to COVID-19, 2020 was a record year for Steam. Several records got shattered. For example, in 2020, there were more new customers than in any other year. More hours were logged, and sales figures increased by more than 21% compared to the year prior. After the development of Dishonored 2 in Lyon, France, Harvey Smith, the co-creator of Dishonored, moved back to Texas where he works on a new project at Arcane Austin, the studio behind the first Dishonored and another game called Prey. Whether that new game has any ties to Dishonored is currently still unclear. For the new Mass Effect game, BioWare is bringing back many of the creative minds that worked on the original trilogy. Art director Derek Watts, narrative designer Dusty Everman, and creative director Parrish Levy, among others, have a history with the series. Anna Medill, who co-wrote Control and Dishonored Death of the Outsider, will work at Playground Games, where she will work on the scenario of the new Fable game. The next game from Wasteland 3 developer in Exile Entertainment could very well turn out to be a first-person RPG. The studio is looking for an art designer with RPG experience and a game designer who knows something about first-person gameplay. Before Microsoft ventured into the console market with the Xbox, the software giant first tried a few acquisitions. EA and Square Enix were among them, but they declined the proposal. Microsoft also wanted to work with Nintendo, possibly to take care of their hardware development, but they were also interested in buying the entire company. But that proposal would have been met with derision from Nintendo. Eventually, Microsoft was able to take over Bungie, and with Halo, it got their hands on a killer franchise that allowed them to launch their first console. Nintendo has acquired Next Level Games, a logical decision given that the Canadian studio has been working closely with Nintendo for a long time, and developed the successful Luigi's Mansion 3. After Take-Two offered just under a billion dollars to acquire racing game developer Codemasters, EA made a counteroffer of 1.2 billion dollars. Take-Two then decided to cancel its acquisition plans, which means that Codemasters will soon belong to EA. Take-Two says it will continue to look for interesting acquisition options. In 2006, Core Design worked on a PSP remake of the original Tomb Raider. However, the project, which was briefly reskinned as an Indiana Jones game, was cancelled in favor of Crystal Dynamics' Tomb Raider Anniversary. An alpha version has now surfaced on the Internet Archive, so you can explore some of the planned locations from the project. Wolfenstein developer Machine Games is now working on an Indiana Jones title for Lucasfilm Games, with an all-new story set during the heyday of Dr. Jones' career. Since the game will be released by Bethesda, it will likely be an Xbox exclusive. Lucasfilm Games is also teaming up with Ubisoft for a new Star Wars game. This will be developed by the division developer Massive Entertainment and will be a narrative-driven open-world adventure. The game will also use Massive's own Snowdrop engine. The partnership with Ubisoft means the end of the exclusivity agreement EA had with Lucasfilm. The deal concluded in 2013. That means that until 2023, only EA could publish Star Wars games. Whether the contract was terminated prematurely is unclear, but since the Star Wars game from Ubisoft is unlikely to appear before 2023, EA appears to keep its 10-year exclusivity agreement. In any case, EA is interested in continuing to develop Star Wars games even after 2023. 
Square Enix has protected Ever Crisis and the first Soldier titles. Ever Crisis is reminiscent of the two Final Fantasy VII spin-offs Crisis and Crisis Core, and the first Soldier seems to be a reference to Final Fantasy VII's villain Sephiroth. The fact that Square Enix also had the Shinra logo protected suggests new plans with Final Fantasy VII. According to a Korean news site, development of PUBG 2 has started. Crytek is looking for employees who have experience with sandbox shooters. Is Crisis 4 in development, or will it be a brand new IP? The DS Classic Monster Tale, a cross between Metroidvania and a pet simulator, will be released for current consoles. And that's it guys, you're back up to speed, and got things to talk about during your next family reunion. Well, once COVID is done. If you like this kind of content and you want to see more gaming news, reviews, and release roundups, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss another upload. And I'll see you when I see you. That's awesome.